hello, hello, and welcome to It's All Good. I am your host, Latavia, and back for another episode. It's been a little while since um, I put out an episode, but you know, life has been lifing as always, but I appreciate those of you who have been listening um, to previous episodes, or for those of you who may have discovered the podcast um, during this brief break. Um, But for those who are listening for the first time, It's All Good is a weekly podcast where I share my experiences with adulting, learning to embrace the journey, the process that is life, um, because that is, it's a new adventure every day. So welcome. And for those of you who have been listening, hello again and welcome back. Um, before I get started, I one of the things that I do at the beginning of all episodes is a gratitude moment. And today I am, it's interesting, I was literally just listening to a song called Grateful earlier. Uh, but I am grateful for where I am in life. As much as some days it feels a bit frustrating um, because I'm not where... I'm supposed to be or where I thought I would be or where I'd like to be or things have not played out the way that I thought they would. Um, I'm doing more than okay. I'm doing very well. And I'm appreciative of where I am in this season of my life and this phase of the process. Uh, Because as unpleasant or uncomfortable as it may be sometimes, I'm learning a lot about myself. And some things that I like more than others, but overall, like I said, I'm, I'm learning, um, I'm enjoying this learning process. Um, so with that being said, um, today I wanted to just kind of just talk about a little bit of life, what's been going on with me over these last couple of months. I think the last uh, episode I put out, it was right before, I believe it was right before my sister's wedding or right after. Um, So since then, my sister is now married. The wedding was a great time. It was beautiful. Um, I'm happy that they are now officially husband and wife. I have a brother, a brother-in-law now, so I'm excited about that. Um, My dad also graduated um, with his PhD or his his doctorate. Um, So that was Got to, it was a busy, May was a very busy month um, because I was back and forth to North Carolina a lot, but it was all for great reasons to celebrate my family. So like I said, I was there for my sister's wedding and then back again the following week for my dad's graduation, you know, be able to be there despite the fact that it was in Lynchburg, Virginia. I won't hold that against you. I'm glad that he uh, was able to, you know, to accomplish that goal. Um, And then the rest of the month was just spent working, trying to put in time, not even trying, but putting in time in terms of building a business. If you're watching this, you might be able to see I'm I'm playing with beads, as I like to say. Um, I've been working on making more waist beads and bracelets. Um, Part of it is a hobby or just something that I do in my spare time also as I'm preparing to launch or relaunch Waste and Teens. Um, So that's just something to be on the lookout for. But in this last couple months, I celebrated one year, or I not necessarily celebrated, but made it to one year of homeownership, which it's kind of surreal because there are times where I feel like I just moved in and there's things that I'm, there's definitely things I'm still learning. Um, some days it feels like I've been here for a while, but I just wanted to share with you guys some of the lessons <laughs> that I've learned during this first year, um, just even from, you know, kind of hindsight being 2020 things that I would have paid more attention to or spent more time on up front, as opposed to what I did spend time on and just things that, like I said, as I'm continuing to learn, um, I am beyond grateful for the opportunity to have been able to purchase a home. It was was a goal of mine for a very long time. Went through a lot of different hoops and jumps and processes to get to this point. Um, But we're here now. So the first lesson, and I 
may have touched on this before in the past, but the first would be be very get to know yourself. <laughs> Get to know yourself because the search, the house search or buying process definitely revealed a lot about myself in terms of, you know, what I have said that I wanted versus what I actually want and what sounds good or what looks good um, on a television show or in, in, in paper or whatever versus what you actually want. Like, so for me, one of the first things was that I had to... I guess conceit a bit on was, you know, what your budget is and what you want. Are they lining up? In my case, <laughs> they were not lining up. Where I wanted to live, like the area that I wanted to be in, was not lining up with the amount of money that I wanted to spend um, or that I even thought was reasonable. Um, so definitely location and budget. So I would say be clear on what you want in terms of like what your expectations are but also don't be so rigid um that you kind of lock yourself out of something especially in the market these last couple of years um i know that the interest rates have gone up re gone back up recently so it's even i guess even slimmer pickings now than before but that's the one thing is just you know be clear on who you are, where, what you want, like what are the the non-negotiables, even if you think about, you know, if you're entering into a relationship, whether it be a friendship, a romantic one, or even a working relationship, there are things that you have your non-negotiables, your standards. So for me, I wanted a garage. It wasn't it was one of those ones where I was willing to go without it, but when I was being very completely honest with myself, I wanted to have a garage because partially I like the idea of having one. Second, the place I, the apartment I've been living in for the last like two and a half, three years, I had covered, we had a garage, like a parking garage. So it was covered parking. I had gotten used and accustomed to not having to shovel my car out or, you know, go completely outside to get to my car. So like I said, it could be minor, but it's something that was important to me. Another was um, I wanted to either have a single family home or an end road, you know, end of road townhouse. There weren't a lot of the end road townhouses coming available. Um, and so like I said, then looking at some of those things, it caused me to move further away from the area that I initially wanted. Um, another I would say one thing that I felt as though it was a non-negotiable was I wanted to have a certain number of bathrooms. Um, but I ended up, th this house that I'm in has, um, it does not have the half bath that I was looking for, but it works because for one, it's just me. There are still multiple bathrooms or space for everyone. You know, I've had family or friends come and visit and stay and, no one's fighting over the bathroom. So it's like that was one of the areas where I kind of conceded of, okay, it's not that important if I don't have two and a half bathrooms or three bathrooms. Um, there's bathrooms. There's a bathroom for me to use and there's a bathroom for guests to use and it's just fine. Um, the other is an inspection was required. I, I certainly think you definitely want to get an inspection. And I did have an inspection, but one of the things that I learned kind of as they were doing the inspection, but definitely since, that if you're short of it being a brand new house or a house that has not, that has parts of it that have not been completed, like an unfinished basement, there's only so much that they can find in the inspection because they're not tearing down the walls. Um, they can only, you know, they can do the infrared scan, they can look at things, but it's really surface level. And so I appreciate that I had an inspection and they did, there were some things that were pointed out that I was able to address, you know, kind of early on. But what I've learned is just be prepared, prepare for the unexpected. Because as I have been told multiple times over this last year, owning a house is more than a notion. There's always something. And it doesn't, I guess for me, I'm learning not to look at that from a negative but just hey 
just like as long as we're living, there's going to be different issues that come up. There, there's highs and lows. So some of my <laughs> um, lows, so to speak, of of my experience is when I had the house inspected, they inspected the roof. Um, one of the other challenges I would say for me was the previous owners were home during the time of the inspection. And so they were literally kind of there at almost all aspects of where the inspector was going around. But they also told the inspector that the roof had been replaced in the last five years. So of course, once again, hindsight being 2020, I think the inspector, I mean, they did go up and they, they checked everything, but they said that it was in good condition. It looked good. There were no, there were no kind of red flags blaring. And I believe they may have taken the homeowner's word for it, you know, taken them at face value and given them the benefit of the doubt. I did as well. Um, so fast forward uh, about six, five, six months, there were several storms. So I just reached out to my insurance company, you know, hey, I just want to check to see if there's any issues with my roof. More of just the CYA thing because I didn't really expect there to be an issue, but lo and behold, <laughs> there was damage to the roof and once they actually you know went through the process of getting estimates I know a whole lot more about roofs now than I ever thought I would or even wanted to know but going through that process or uh, well, a part of that process was learning about roofs the different types of materials all the different things all the things that go into it but come to find out that not only did the shingles need to be replaced all of the wood or sheet uh, plywood underneath the shingles needed to be replaced so and i learned that maybe the previous owners replaced some of the shingles within the last five years but they did not have the roof properly repaired or replaced so i ended up having to get a completely new roof um but thank god i have insurance and my insurance company covered it so it was not something that I had to come completely out of pocket for because when I say I was not prepared for that, like for being unprepared is an understatement. So I'm beyond grateful to God as well as to my insurance company that it was the roof um, being repaired was covered. And like I said, um, absent a few cosmetic things, um, my insurance company covered all of it. Um, the other thing that actually I'll, I'll give us the other lesson. So I, the lesson in that is, like I said, have an inspection, but if in if possible, you know, do not have if the house is um you know if it's not a new build and there's and it's currently occupied, whether it be by tenants or the owners, um, make it. So that they're not, you know, have your realtor or whomever you're working with push so that the uh, owner is not present when you're getting your inspection done. Because I think that just one is awkward because it's like, hey, I know this is your house, but also I'm basically I'm judging it. Um, so it just adds a little extra awkwardness. But if possible, like I said, um, make it a requirement that the current owners are not home at the time of the inspection and then also if possible um getting having like an additional i don't know an add-on or something for the inspection to make sure that they are searching as much of the house as possible or you know being as thorough as possible uh, but then at the same time things happen um the other thing that i learned with respect to kind of the big ticket items uh where the house i'm in is older so i knew okay it's older there are certain things that might not be as new it comes with its own set of issues but that was what i wanted another thing i learned was you, know, you got to be careful about what it is that you are praying for or th thinking about whether you ever even if you never speak it audibly <laughs> or write it down the silent prayers or silent meditations um they matter and they still manifest so one of the things with that did come up in the inspection was my HVAC and water heater being older. So I knew when I decided to purchase the home that 
they were older and would likely need to be replaced sooner than later. Now, where I would say I feel my mistake was instead of pressing to have, uh, now, I guess the caveat is sellers were not offering a lot of concessions or many incentives at all in uh, 21 to, to buyers because of just the way the market was. But knowing what I know now, I would have pushed to either have gotten some money towards the replacement of one if not both of those um machines or either push to have them offer money require them to replace it before they so before the house was sold or you know have the the purchase price brought down because those are things that hey i i knew that there was a strong possibility that i would have to replace them within a year two years tops so that's something i didn't do to be honest, I was more focused on the cosmetic things um, and just hope, more so kind of just hoping that, hey, I'll have time. That'll be, I'll have more time. Not so much. I've, I've replaced both of them in the last year. Um, but like I said, even in that, it's, there's been a lot of kind of frustration, internal frustration and kind of beating myself up of like, oh, you should have done this. You should have done that. Why didn't you think of this? Why didn't you think of that? Which is a big part of why I am, I wanted to share this with you all is for those who you're thinking about buying, you're currently in the process of trying to buy, or even you bought and you're, you know, looking to do it again. Just, I want to share some of the mistakes. I'm not even necessarily mistakes that I made, but just things that I've learned um, during my process. So like I said, three major things have occurred um, during this process. But nevertheless, I'm here. Things are working. It's going well. A few other things that I've learned, um, which may be common knowledge. I don't know. One of the things that I definitely got uh, comfortable with and I did enjoy about renting is that I had a landlord and when there were issues, whether it be plumbing, electrical, small repairs, whatever it may be, I could just call the landlord or the property manager and they arrange for someone to come fix it. Not so much when it's your house, um, which I, it's one of those things that's kind of like, you know it in theory, but it's different when you actually have to do it. So I did get a warranty, so that definitely helped. Um, for various things that happened. And so I was able to get a lot of the smaller plumbing things taken care of through my warranty company. But what I've learned is there's, of course, there's a lot of apps and things out here, Thumbtack, uh, Andrews West, Home Advisor, all these different things um, for options for resources to find these different types of people. But I'm not from this area and then the parts of Maryland that I lived in where I do know people who have, you know, they have a plumber, they have an electrician, they have this person they can call and refer, all live over an hour away from where I do. So it was literally trial and error of different um, plumbers, electricians. Um, that's been the biggest thing is the plumbing piece is it was a some series of leaks that, once again, did not come up in the inspection um, that I learned once I got in and did some living in the house. Um, but like I said, I can say I'm on the other side of all of those things. They've been repaired. But so I would say definitely get a warranty, a home warranty. Um, if you're purchasing, see if you can get that negotiated so that the seller pays for it, at least for that first year. Um, if not, definitely look into it for yourself. But make sure you read not just the contract, but the fine print about what is covered versus what is not covered. Because <laughs> also had a lot of fun, not so much going through that. Um, but if I would say as you are deciding to look some things to consider outside of just oh location budget what do we want you know what do I want in the house 
also, you know, start asking around or developing a list of who is a good plumber, who's a good electrician, a good handyman. Um, if you want to update floors, because that's still on my list of things to do to, you know, uh, change my flooring, um, windows, uh, lawn care. Lawn care is a whole other beast, especially if you have, you know, have a yard um, or if you're not somewhere where the HOA handles it, um, finding some, unless you are a do-it-yourselfer, you got to get out and cut the grass, pull the weeds, do the landscaping, all of those wonderful things that bring some people so much joy. I'm not one of them. Um, so even that is something to think about. So kind of always say, as you are looking you know, kind of making your list of the house and like what you want, you know, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, do you want carpet, do you want hardwood, uh, do you want a single level, do you want two stories, do you want three levels, uh, what type of layout you want, all of those things are important, um, of course, because it's the house and like where you're going to live, closet space, all of those things are great, So, but I would say as you are making that list, also start a list or at least be considering or talking to other people about um, a list of contractors or vendors or just people who can help maintain the house. Um, if you are someone who does not necessarily want to clean your house all the time, which I completely understand if you do, um, you know, preparing a list of, of different cleaning services uh, for the house. Carpet cleaning, getting your ducts cleaned, because that was something also that thankfully my realtor gave me a heads up about a lot of the things that are good to do when you first move in um but just researching companies a locksmith you know you can certainly if you are so inclined or capable you could change the locks yourself i happen to come from a family who is very much strong on the do-it-yourself route and so that was something that with the help of my dad and a family friend we did that you know bought some new locks changed them um, there have been painting, that was a DIY project between my mom and I in terms of painting. Um, so like I said, think of a list or just start kind of compiling a list of people, you know, obviously talking to your circle, your village, um, if you have that in the area that you live. Because like I said, for me, part of the challenge was I do have a village of people who have purchased or who have handymen or have different um, people that I could call, the challenge was none of them live where I live. And there, a lot of those different companies did not necessarily travel <laughs> to where I am. So um, like I said, those are kind of the big takeaways. But I would say some of the things that for me, I was aware of, but did not I did not, I do not believe I did the greatest job of actually counting up the cost or factoring all of the additional things uh, that come with having a house. Um, you know, my biggest focus was, okay, can I get qualified? Y'all gonna make sure these student loans, you know, can I overcome this hurdle that is my student, that are my student loans and the debt to income ratio? Okay, what's the purchase price? What's gonna be the monthly What's my monthly payment? What is this? What is that? Like, though, that was where more of my focus was. But for me, it was also an adjustment because I had spent the last few years working on reducing my expenses so that I could save more um, and getting my, you know, eliminating as many expenses as possible to, and then going from that to then now owning. And it was just like, <laughs> In the blink of a blink of an eye, my expenses doubled, and not necessarily because I was doing any kind of swerving things. It was just the things that come with the house, um, and partially because I appreciate convenience. Um, so you know, pest control. It's not necessary, but for me, it was something that let me do it. For me, a lot of things was let me just do these things at least for the first year to kind of get into a groove until I'm able to kind of start taking over things so I did pay for lawn care specifically cutting the grass I have a pretty big yard 
I am not a big fan of yard work. And I did not want to cut the grass. So, you know, paying for someone to take care of the yard. I got a security system. Um, paying for pest control initially. Uh, let me see. What else are some of the things that I just... Or even just my utilities. Um, I lived on my own. I had a roommate. And, you know, it was an apartment. It does not take nearly as much... Uh, electricity or energy gas whatever to heat or cool an apartment as it does a house, a house. so it's just uh and then also being in an apartment i often paid everything to one person and it was somewhat prorated so it's just making sure not so much i think you certainly want to make sure you're good at managing your bills uh, that's something i would say you would hopefully have mastered before you get to this get to this point but for me it was just kind of the realization and acceptance of hey some of these things just come with the territory of having a house um and one of the things that i did to prepare before you know when i was like decided i wanted to buy that i'd been told is you know you want to get to a point where you can set aside a certain amount every month in addition to your bill so that way when things happen you have some money set aside and you're not necessarily having to either charge it or being sol looking for people because you know something happened and then you don't have the resources to cover it or just kind of having to grin and bear it for an instant indefinite period of time um so i can comfortable i can say now i am I feel like i'm comfortable and confident in terms of managing and maintaining my home i've certainly now gotten my own list <laughs> Of, of people or, or uh, contractors uh, for most of the day, you know, the routine things that if something were to happen again, I can now say honestly, because plumbing has been a big thing. I have a plumber uh, that I feel comfortable with that if I were to have any other issues that I can call. Um, I now have names of some electricians so that when I want to make some changes to different lighting fixtures or, you know, adjust things that I can call. Um, I have the lawn care situation situated now. Um, otherwise, it's just I've learned how to do a few things myself. Um, and thankfully, I have parents who have owned and are pretty well versed in addition to other friends and family who can kind of like, if it's, hey, I heard this or I saw this, I can kind of troubleshoot with them about what it might be. And of course, there is the lovely internet and YouTube with all of the videos that you could imagine on how to do things. Um, but like I said, overall, I am grateful for this experience grateful for the things that i've learned um i don't know if it's automatic if it's required but in addition to having a home warranty i would strongly encourage you to have homeowner's insurance because they have certainly come through in the clutch for me on a few occasions already so like i said kind of just i guess um kind of the big things is one take some time to do some self-reflection um, making sure you're comfortable with who you are, where you are, and you know what you want and what you don't want. Because during the search, I think regardless of what is going on with the market, this process can try you. It, it certainly, you know, reveals things to you about yourself. So knowing yourself and what you want, get an inspection, uh, have some conversation with the person, you know, who's going to do your inspection. Make sure it's not someone that is working with or for the seller or for your realtor, your realty company, or even a mortgage company, like if someone that you you trust that they are going to be, they are going to be thorough. Um, like I said, as you are preparing your list of what you want in the house, also be thinking about at least trying to get information on different uh, contractors for various things around the house. So, you know, a handyman, uh, you know, I wish I had Obi up upstairs or up the street. But so those are those like three big things. When you do get your inspection and, and things, you do a walkthrough. 
look at the big items, not just the cosmetic things, um, in terms of what it's going to cost to have them repaired. And depending on what that cost is, is it worth it to you? And if you still like the house, despite some of the um, anticipated repairs, use that as leverage in your negotiation with the seller um, and trying to, like I said, whether it be requiring that they repair or replace some of the items before closing, that they give you concessions, essentially, you know, money towards those things or adjusting the sales price to, to offset it in that way. Um, and then the biggest thing is expect the unexpected. Um, accept that, and I think this applies to life, well, not I think, I've learned this applies to life as well, but expect the unexpected, be prepared for things to happen or not necessarily, don't go into it hoping that nothing goes wrong, go into it knowing that there will be something that happens, something will break, something will leak, um, something will happen because it's a house and things happen um, for one, even if it's nothing in the house, nature. Uh, so like, you know, there could be a storm that causes a tree to fall or causes, a, you know, severe power outage. Your appliances within the house, most things are connected to technology these days. So it's, it's, it's more of a, a if than a, it's more of a when as opposed to an if, I guess is what I'm saying. So like I said, expect the unexpected. Um, embrace <laughs> embrace the journey of it embrace the process embrace the the challenging moments as well as the highs and the joyous ones because it does all balance out and like I said if we if you're thinking about life as well it is a process <laughs> there are ups and downs but know that in the end it is all working together for your good, and it will all be good. So thank you for listening, and until next time.